Psalm 12. Notice Psalm 12 and verse number 1 and verse number 2. Psalm 12, verse 1 and verse 2. Notice this is a psalm of David. David says to the Lord, help, O Lord, or help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart or a double mind, they speak. Help, Lord, for, notice what he said, exclamation point, for the godly man ceases. He ceases. For the faithful, notice what David noted, that the faithful disappear or fail from among the sons of men. How did he know they had ceased from being godly? How did he know they had stopped being faithful? He judged how they were talking. He said they speak idly, everyone with his neighbor. They talk about nothing. They gossip. They're busybodies with flattering lips. Things that they say, they're not sincere in what they're speaking. They are deceptive when they talk. And they are speaking, notice it church, with a double heart or a double mind they speak. Now of course when we look at man, we know David is referring to mankind. He is not excluding the woman or the female. When he said, help Lord, for the godly man ceases. Again, he's talking about mankind. For the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. And so considering that he is speaking to mankind, we want to understand that. That the text is, is broad. But being that it's Father's Day. I want to target this message to men, not only to men, but I want men to be my primary focus on this Father's Day. Not just speaking to fathers, but speaking to, to men. And notice again before I give you my subject. He said, help Lord, for the godly man ceases. He said, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. And we see it in God's house. We see it in God's church where the faithful are disappearing. In one sense, we know it's taking place because of the great falling away. That many are, are leaving the path of righteousness and they're getting back on the evil path. And so based upon all that I've said thus far, I want to speak from the subject, the disappearance of faithful men. I want to talk to you from the subject, the disappearance of of faithful men. Where are the faithful men? Notice again when, when King David wrote this psalm. He's asking help of the Lord. This is important. He's asking. He said help Lord. For the godly man ceases to be. Certainly we know David was not speaking of every man. But in asking for God's help, David wants to see the nation or God's people unite in a greater way as it refers to being faithful to God. He being a faithful man, but not a perfect man, was bothered when he looked at how people who were once faithful had started being unfaithful. And it bothered David. It bothered David, but David knew that the Lord could help. The Lord could help, and as David cried to the Lord, and, and it's my same cry, he wants to see people who have gotten off the path of righteousness, 
He wants the Lord to deal with him. He wants the Lord to help because David wants to see people who had stopped being faithful. He wants God to deal with them. He wants their sins to deal with them. And I don't know about you, but that's my prayer concerning people who were once in the faith, but allowed something or somebody to pull them out of the faith. I want their sins to deal with them. I don't want them to get any rest. Come on, somebody. I don't want them to get any peace until they repent, have a change of heart, or turn back to the Lord. You say, Pastor, why would you desire that? Because I don't want to see anybody end up in hell since hell was not created for us. Come on, y'all ought to give me more hand praises than that. We need to unite, not giving up on people, but we need to be the kind of folk who are crying out to God. Lord, save the backslider. Lord, save the backslider. God, deal with the backslider. The time is out for putting down the backslider. They know they're backslidden. They know they're not where they need to be, but who's praying for them? Who's interceding for them? Come on, church. But the text is also a reminder that we need to remain faithful. The old saints used to sing a song, so many falling by the wayside. Lord, help me to stand. See, that better be your prayer. Lord, help me to stand. I want to stay in your will, but I need your help, God. I need God's help to stay in his will every day. Every day. And so when we think about the faithful, and many of us are faithful, we need to remain faithful. We need to remain loyal to God. Come on, church. Especially in these times. One reason we need to remain faithful, if you're taking note, is because there are people watching us. Come on, we need to remain faithful. We don't need to just do it because somebody is looking at us, but we do need to be mindful. That if God raises us up, then people have the right to look at our life, come on church, or our lifestyle. You don't get to stand where I stand and folk not look at you. They are supposed to look at me. Y'all are supposed to watch my lifestyle. You are supposed to check out my behavior. You are supposed to look at how I talk. You are supposed to look at how I treat my wife. You are supposed to look at how I treat my children. You need to know how I treat saints. Come on, somebody. And I need to understand that people are watching me. People are watching me. See, when you claim to be saved, there's somebody in your family who's watching you. Whether they ever come up and tell you or not, they're watching you. And sometimes you are hope for people who will never come out and admit it to you. But the fact that you're staying in the church, the fact that you're staying loyal, it gives them a sense of hope. Come on, somebody. And see, in some cases, understand that people are looking for leadership. They're looking for leadership. We live in a time now where men are looking for godly men. Where are the men who are proven examples? Where are the faithful men? Am I right about it? As men, it's important that we understand divine order. It's, under, it's important for every man to understand divine order. Because when a order is divine, it simply means that that order, that way of doing things, that structure 
is from God. And nobody can break, teach pastor, disrupt God's order and be blessed by God. You can't break God's divine order and think that God is going to honor you. And so men need to know divine order. Let me show it to you. First Corinthians. Let me show you divine order. Divine order that you can't argue with. Come on somebody. If you take a note, you can't argue with divine order. You can do it, but you're wasting your time. Because what God said to be order, to establish peace within his church as well as within the family, we don't want to break it. We don't want to break that. You don't ever want to break divine order. Notice what divine order is according to Paul in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Y'all hang in here. We need some good teaching today to make us strong, to mature us. We need the word of God to speak to men. Faithful men as well as unfaithful men. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, Paul says this, but I want you to know, but I want you to know. See, don't even slip on that. But I want you to know. Paul was letting the church know there's something that God wants me to let you know. Why am I going to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3? Because there is something that God wants us to know. See, for him that know it to do right and does wrong, James said for him is sin. Now, when I reveal to you divine order, if you break it, you in sin. You in error. Not knowing your place. Woo! Come on. Not know when you look at the breakdown of the family, the breakdown of the family in one sense has to do with people in one sense, not knowing their place, but in another sense, people not willing to get in their place. It's one thing to know your place. It's a whole different thing to get in your place. If we had men who knew their place and men who didn't mind getting in their place. It would be a blessing to women. Woo, I didn't get sisters in class. I said it would be a blessing to women. Because every good woman can appreciate a good man. I'm going to drop it on you again. Every good woman can appreciate a good man. I'm going to drop it on you again. Every good woman can appreciate having a good man. Every good member can appreciate having a good pastor. If you don't appreciate having me, ain't nothing wrong with me. Something wrong with you. The destruction of the family is people interfering with God's divine order. And we live in a time now where folk, folk can't stand God's divine order. Amen. Noted 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is who? The head of woman is who? The head of woman is who? Man. Man is the head of woman. So woman needs man. Women need a good head. Come on, I'm going to break it down. A woman needs a faithful head, a faithful man. Know his place, don't mind getting in it and staying in it. Trouble going to come, but men need to stay in your place. Stop pouting, stop acting boyish. Stop needing to be pumped up all the time by the woman that you're supposed to be leaving.
Come on, if word gonna get tight this morning. Yeah, many brothers gonna scratch their head. Many brothers gonna look down. Remember my subject, the disappearance of faithful men. Faithful men. Faithful men. And when I use the word good, I'm talking faithful. I'm talking loyal to God. Let me break down faithful. Number two, one, two, two things faithfulness means. I'm getting excited. Number one is living by faith. Faithful men live by faith. But is that limited to man? No. A faithful woman lives by faith. Sister, if you live by sight, you are not a faithful sister. If this church walks more by our senses than we do living by faith, this is not a faithful church. This is not a church that's positioned to be a blessing to people or to cause people, teach it pastor, to be productive in every aspect of their lives. Am I right about it? Yeah. Secondly, when it means to be faithful or what it means to be faithful is to put one's trust in God. If you are faithful, your trust or your confidence is in God. It's in God. And that matters. Who you trust matters. And I'm not talking about that 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 uh that that fake trust. Come on, I'm not talking about that which on top surface looks like a person is trusted, but but they're really not, and that's evident in time of trouble. Come on, how, how many know trouble will tell on you? How many know trouble will reveal your true character? How many know trials will will show you who you really trust? Am I right? Things can happen in your life for the sole purpose as well as my life of showing me who I really trust. You know God will permit some things to happen in our lives to show us where our trust is really at. When you cry because man can't help you, you letting God know where your trust is at. Or either you are immature saint. But when we become mature, there's never a need to cry because of something man can't do. Come on, I'm teaching good this morning. It's never a need to get down and out all depressed because man said he can't help you. Am I right? Many of us have stayed lively, joyful. Even when man couldn't help us, only because we knew that man didn't have the final say anyhow. You can't help me, but God is my very present help in time of what? Trouble. Am I teaching right this morning? It's a good word. Notice Psalm 22. Because it matters. It matters. We need to remain faithful. There is something about men being faithful in God's house and being faithful in their house that causes God, y'all listen to me, that causes God to move for his people. Did y'all catch that? For his people. When faithful men know their place, and are in their place, they can touch God, not just for themselves, but they can touch God for their family. Oh, I want to let a man know, you can touch God on behalf of your grandchildren. You can, as a faithful man, we have God's ear. I wish some of y'all would pray like you knew you had God's ear. Pastor, what do you mean have God's ear? He said he always hears the cries of the righteous. 
if you are righteous, if you are faithful, God always listens to you when you pray. He always stops to hear what you have to say. He's always listening. Somebody should have got happy this morning because you've been asking for some help. You've been crying out to God about some things. As a faithful man, we have God's ear. I'm finna show it to you in scripture. We have God's ear. And this is the reason demons fight men. I'm gonna reveal to you this morning why demons fight men. And if you're a man, get used to being fought by evil. Evil is here, brother, to keep you out of your rightful place. Y'all better listen to me, young men. You better get your head on straight right now. Because evil don't want you to be the man God has ordained for you to be. Evil is there to stop y'all, young brothers. Evil is there to trap a man. Even before he can fully come into adulthood, I'm teaching good. Evil is out there to cause a man to make mistakes that cause him for years. Cost him time that he can't get back. I'm going to preach right this morning. There are jobs that young men can't get now because of mistakes they made yesterday. Got a felony in and out of jail doing crooked and low down things. And see, the enemy loved to entrap young brothers and cause them to make terrible decisions that they'll reap for years. Y'all better hear me, young brothers. There are decisions that you can make that'll jack your life up, and mama can't get you out of that. I'm gonna say it again. There are some things you can get in trouble, and mama can't get you out of that. You know what's wrong with some young men? That their parents allow them to know if you go out here and do something stupid, we're willing to get a second mortgage. We're willing to put the house up. Come on. Y'all, y'all know I'm right about that. We're willing to get all of our 401k to keep you from going to jail. Even though we spend all that, you get out and you back in for the same stuff. See, what pastor trying to teach men today is that the culture right now is not set up for us to know our place and for us to be in our place. And it's all because of an evil plan. Stuff ain't happening by accident. When you see the mess that people like Dwayne Wade is doing, that is not by accident. This man has set himself in a place after having a wonderful NBA career, he now retires from the NBA with all that fame, money, power, and influence. And the only thing him and Gabrielle want to do is, is, is to cause young people to be transgender. He got the same spirit as Obama. He puts the gay agenda before any agenda. I knew I wasn't going to get many clap for talking about Obama. But Obama is the one that set it off. He set it off. They used Obama. They used the color of his skin and told him to run under a campaign for change. But we just didn't know what type of change this man had in mind. Obama was the first and only president. He was the first president to talk about homosexuality and relate it as a skin color. First man to ever do that was Barack Obama. To compare homosexuality to being black. He did that. One of the most evil men on the planet. 
And the devil ain't through using Obama. Because a man that charismatic, a man that loving, a man that powerful, a man that influential, who is spending his whole life, you don't believe me? You study him. When he left office, his greatest accomplishment was being able to see two women get married. And he wrote them a beautiful letter. Psalm 22. Woo! Quiet church. Psalm 22. I know something. Don't you talk about Obama. I'm going to talk about Obama. If he wrong, I'm going to talk about your mama if she wrong. I'm going to talk about my mama if she wrong. Ain't nobody off limits. That's what's wrong with the church. We assign whether we're going to attack something with how we like a person or what we feel about. No, we got to go back to calling good, good and evil, evil. No matter the position or the title, our deliverance is not in the Republican or the Democrats. America needs more Christians, real Christians. We not going to be saved by Biden. We will not be saved by Trump. Thank you for watching the Making People Productive broadcast with Pastor Leonard D. Cochran of A Place of Refuge, Noonan. To order your copy of today's message, please call the church office at 770-252-3855 and reference the message number listed below. We want to hear from you. If you have been helped, strengthened, or encouraged by the word, let us know. Also, don't forget to connect with us on all of our major social media platforms to receive exclusive information and updates with all things Refuge Noonan. A Place of Refuge Noonan is located in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. on location and live at 1045 a.m. We also have service every Wednesday at 715 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube Live.